I think we're one step away first because, you know, Sepp Blatter says he's going to sort FIFA out. I personally don't think he can or he will. And the kind of attitude he's adopted since last Friday, I think, shows that he, you know, he wants to just brazen it out. Um, and consequently, that's what, one of the first things I think the Prime Minister should do is get all the broadcasters, the sponsors, um, the football associations of the home nations sitting around a table together to, to form a common, robust British position um, and, then, and then get the other countries in Europe on board as well for a UEFA um, possible, um, whether you want to call it boycott or setting up an alternative competition, I don't mind. Well, yes, because that will need the support of other nations, won't it? Have you put pick feelers out? It'd be in ludicrous if alone. we tried to go ahead on our own. Greg Dyke is absolutely right. And I think those who call for an immediate British boycott, as it were, or an England boycott for 2018, I think are mistaken. It, it's much better to bring that, all, lots of countries together. But how much support? is that likely to get, bearing in mind the amount of support that Sepp Blatter had in his re-election? Well, he, he had a significant amount of, uh, of support, but you've got to remember that it's quite a few of the countries in Latin America can't have voted for him, um, most of the countries in Europe, and I think that there will, I, I'm, I'm sure that if the British prosecuting authorities are doing their job properly, which I hope they are, John Whittingdale didn't answer on this today in the, in, the, in the House of Commons. If they're doing their job properly, I suspect that there'll be more charges to come and Sepp Blatter's position will become completely untenable. I think it's, it's untenable to us now, but I think it will become more transparently so to others. You talked about several strands there. You talked about wanting answers as far as sponsors are concerned and also broadcasters as well. Start with sponsors. I mean, do you feel that that's where the most traction can be felt, if you like? I mean, money talks in this game, doesn't of, it? Of course, but I, I'm amazed how mealy-mouthed some of the sponsors have been. I mean, do they not realise? I thought the whole point of sponsorship was that you identified your brand with a popular brand. Well, if the World Cup is such a damaged, tainted, corrupt brand, I can only imagine that it's not going to do FIFA, uh, Visa, um, um, Coca-Cola, uh, Nike, McDonald's. It's not going to do their brands any favour. So I think they should be much more robust, and the Prime Minister should get them in for a summit and tell them, look, you are damaging your own business here if you, if you, if you stick with FIFA. Um, and, uh, I mean, maybe Gazprom, you know, the Russian gas uh, energy company is used to the, um, that kind of dodgy brand, but we're not. And, we, and, and if people are going to go and buy McDonald's burgers and buy Nike shoes... They may well argue they want to see where these investigations lead first. What about the broadcasters, though? That was the other thing that you mentioned. Yes, yeah, so I asked Whittingdale last week, can he be absolutely sure that no licence fee payers' money has gone into anybody's back pocket? And, and, of course, he hasn't answered that question yet. I think there's a really important issue here, because are we really expecting that licence fee payers' money should go towards um, the rights for the 2018 and the 2022 um, World Cup, because in which case it's our money going straight into somebody else's dodgy back pocket. Um, I think Whittingdale should sit down with all his European colleagues who also have license fees in Germany and Italy and, and Spain and all the rest of it, or whether state subsidy, and should say no, there will be no state funding going to FIFA. Okay, Chris Bryant, thank you. Thank you.